Hey, Cypher here. I've got a new series for you today that I'm tentatively calling There's Nothing New Under the Sun. The name itself might be self-explanatory, but I think this will teach us something greater than the mere origin of a given technology. So without further ado, the cell phone. Many technologies we think that are new things, or have recently changed our lives, are not really that new. In fact, most technologies that we think are completely new to this century actually have origins of nearly 50 years or more. The internet, computers, cell phones, are all things that could fall into that category but we tend to think of them as being fairly new. The first cell phones are normally dated to 1983, and while that date itself is incorrect even for cell phones, that is not the origin of the technology we use today. It is far more nebulous than that. We call them cell phones in the US, but for the rest of the English-speaking world, they're normally called mobile phones, and for good reason. Cellular technology is but a stepping stone in the progress of telephony technology, and I'm gonna go through all of it fairly quickly. Mobile telephones were experimental as early as World War I. After the war, despite horrendous economic conditions in the country, Germany began to have a test program for mobile telephones on their railway systems. They started public trials of the system in 1924 and full adoption in 1926. These were extremely rudimentary phones. For instance, they took up a huge amount of space. There's no way you could carry it with even both hands and some help. They were mounted, but they were mobile. They only had one channel in order to communicate, so that meant that everyone in the nearby area was sharing a party line. The only way you weren't sharing it is if you were out of range. So those are some significant limitations, so it may disqualify them from the honor of being called the first mobile phones. After all, you couldn't carry them and they didn't have multiple channels. So, kinda not the same. It would be over a decade before there would be significant change again. There were theories presented and tested on how mobile phones could work, but nothing saw practical usage. It would take another war for mobile telephony technology to progress again. Kinda see a trend there, don't you? Wars tend to foster new technologies. It's the case in a lot of these things. The first really gave us radio telephony, and the second gave us mobile radio telephony. During World War II, America utilized radio telephony equipment in the field of battle. These devices were large and cumbersome, but they could be carried with one hand. They also had multiple channels, so there could be multiple conversations being held over the same devices. Different devices had more channels and encryptions than others. The problem with these radio telephony sets was that they were no communication towers to support them. They were essentially limited to the broadcasting range of the actual device. Different forms of signal skipping were used to extend the range of these wireless field phones, but they were bound by that range of that signal skip so there was no fixed network. Even before the war, AT&T had been hard at work designing communication towers that would defeat that problem. And by the end of the war, since they had been working on making all of these radio telephony sets, they were ready to launch their own commercial venture. And that's what they did in 1946. This was still not cellular, and for the most part, until the 1970s, these mobile phones had to be close to a tower and mounted to a vehicle or carried as a briefcase. They were unwieldy, poor quality, and very unreliable, but that didn't deter people from using them. At this point, places like New York and LA had almost full coverage for networks utilizing their new towers. Mobile phones were a common sight in rich people's cars by the 1970s, and that fueled the next big innovation in mobile phone technology. Two big things happened in the 70s. The first, in 1973, was when Motorola brought out the first handheld phone. Now, unlike the military ones, this actually operated through the tower system, but it was still not cellular. But in 1979, in Japan, the first cell network came out. Now, this was an analog cell network, but it was a cell network. It utilized signal switching so that you could go between towers. Before this, you had to be tethered to the one tower that you 
started off on. Now you could jump between towers and have multiple towers giving you better signal throughout. Essentially the old signal problems were gone, though lack of coverage in a network is still a problem today. Before the new cellular tech, the old radio telephony system that used towers is normally called 0G because they weren't cellular, but that doesn't mean that they weren't mobile phones. They were definitely mobile phones. After all, in 1973, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between what Motorola brought out and what was being used on the new cell network. And this new cell network is normally called 1G. That 1G stands for first generation. So when you're talking about switching between 3G and 4G on your cell phone, you're talking about third generation tech and fourth generation tech. Throughout the 80s, cell phones gained popularity and became quite commonplace. Since then, innovation has continued at an ever-increasing rate. But that does not mean that the mobile phones are a completely new thing. People have been using them for many decades. Hell, at least half a century. Looking back on the beginnings of mobile phones, we see that the changing landscape of technology makes it near impossible to define a concrete starting point for mobile phones. Do those train-mounted phones count? Military radio telephony? zero G or cell phones. It's kind of hard to define. If you look at most technologies, you will find that they have the same problem. Technology is in constant development, growing as we innovate, but somehow never a completely new thing. For instance, one of the most famous inventions of them all, the light bulb, is normally accredited to Thomas Edison, but his patent was for the first practical incandescent light bulb, because the ones before him were fairly unstable and in an unusable condition. Thomas Edison did not invent the light bulb, he invented the practical light bulb. This is what the story of mobile phones teaches us. There is nothing new under the sun. So thanks for watching. I think I will probably do some more of these technology related episodes at a later date. So if you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Cellular... 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 Cellular...